my name's Arrow. I go by they them pronouns and I'm on testosterone. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, I wanted to let you all know um, what is testosterone and what it does as well as why I chose to go on testosterone and how exactly that happened. So first off I'm going to talk about what testosterone is and, and uh, what it does. And if you already know this and you're familiar with with T, um, I'll put a time description, sorry, I'll put like a time thing in the description so you can just skip ahead. Um, but if you aren't and um, you're not trans and uh, you just know me or whatever, um, or you, you know, you feel free to keep listening. <laughs> Um, so testosterone is considered like the typical male hormone, um, and it's basically the hormone that increases when, um, most teenage boys go through puberty. So, yeah, so basically, uh, some changes that T will cause, um, is like my voice will drop. Um, I might start growing, um, thicker, um, and more, uh, like, body hair, as well as I might start growing, like, darker facial hair, um, but I do plan on shaving my face, uh, but, yeah, that'll happen. Um, yeah, I might start to see some other changes with the way that my face and my body are shaped, just because of fat redistribution that might happen. Um, but basically, like, and there's a few other things that can happen too, if you're really curious. Um, there's a ton of sources about changes of testosterone. Basically, I'll be going through the typical male puberty um, and have the changes that occurs with that. So you may be wondering, wait, I thought you were an binary. Wait, you're not a girl or a boy. Why are you transitioning like a boy? Like, why do you want to look like a boy or whatever um and yeah so, so yes i am non-binary um i specifically identify as agender uh which means like i don't feel like i am a girl or a boy at all um and so it might be a little confusing but the reason i'm not uh, the reason i'm uh, going on hormones is because well I don't feel like a girl at all and no matter what I do people see me as a girl and it makes me so uncomfortable and being in public going to like stores and stuff and people saying oh she and miss and whatever it just it feels so awful so yeah and I found that there was a lot of time where I would change my personality um, I wouldn't be me as much and I change the things that I want to wear and change the way that I want to express myself because you know it was too feminine um, and people would only read me as female so I tried so hard to be as masculine as possible so people would read me as male because when I'm being read as male I'm not being read as female so yeah, and then I realized that I didn't want to do that, and I just wanted to be able to express myself. Um, so, uh, I started to consider T going on testosterone more, um, and more because of that. And also, you know, I don't feel comfortable being perceived as male, but I feel more comfortable being perceived as male by strangers than I do uh, I feel like a lot more comfortable that than being perceived as female by strangers. Um, by people who I know, I would much rather be perceived as neither, um, and, you know, have them refer to me using they pronouns, but, um, you know, I know that's not something I can expect from strangers, so, <laughs> um, yeah. And I also just, when I see myself, I picture my future self as having these more masculine characteristics to my body, but I don't see that person as male, even though I know that a lot of other people might. 
Um, so I'm just, I, I had a lot of hesitations toward starting testosterone, but ultimately I decided it's what I needed to do. So, final part, um, how did I go about starting T? So, uh, starting testosterone. So I, um, have been kind of on the edge about starting testosterone since the beginning of my transition, but it's something that I've wanted. Um, but then I was like, oh, you know, once I have top surgery, because I have a lot of dysphoria around my chest, um, once I have top surgery, I might not need it. I might not have that level of dysphoria to start, like, testosterone. Um, so I kind of put it off and put it off. And, you know, uh, eventually I started pursuing um, and going and getting top surgery and pursuing getting funding for that. Um, and as a part of that journey, I started to want to go on testosterone more and more because I realized, you know, once I get top surgery, I'm still going to have this dysphoria in public and feeling uncomfortable and not being able to express myself. So I realized it was because a fear I had was that I just, I, that I wanted to start T because I wanted to be read as trans enough, which I determined that that's not true for me. So I continued life and um, finally uh, through a long process and a long time I was able to see a doctor who um, sent in the uh, letter of um, prior approval to the um, a request for prior approval rather to the government for my top surgery and he was talking to me and he's like okay um, I display the characteristics for a diagnosis of gender dysphoria under um, the WPATH standards of care and in the DSM. So he's like, okay. Um, and I've been, you know, feeling dysphoric for several years. I have been identifying openly as trans in some spaces for, um, like, like a couple years. So, um, yeah, so for like two and a half years. So, you know, I, I yeah, I've been there um, and identifying as non-binary and so he's like, okay, this is something you want. Um, you're aware of all the symptoms, all the risks, and I was like, yes. Um, and so I did that informed consent um, and I got the T, well, I did blood level. Okay, so for then he was like, okay, I'll sign you up for blood testing. So I signed a form that's like, I'm aware of stuff, gave me blood testing stuff, went to the clinic and then about, um, I had a week uh, where I did the blood testing and then I went to camp so I came back. So it was two weeks later and I handed that, I had another point with him that I scheduled, I handed that to him and then I um, was able to, uh, he gave me the prescription for hormones and we met with him in that and uh, he explained how it worked and um, he sent me off to the pharmacy. So I got went to the pharmacy, filled my prescription, got my needles and my hormones, um, like a little vial, um, and uh, yeah, and he instructed my mom how to give me the testosterone, which is done intramuscular injections. So um, uh, yeah, he told me how to do that, but uh, he said, you know, optional if you need help to come back and do that, but my mom knows how to give needles. Um, she has had experience. Um, she gave herself needles when she had knee surgeries, um, and she just, she is comfortable doing that. So she looked a little bit up on how to give testosterone specifically in least painful ways. Um, and it's to my um, upper, like, butt, I guess, cheek. Uh, it's at the very base of my back, kind of. Um, kind of like here, uh, <laughs> basically, and yeah, so she gave me the shot, um, actually it's in like a public bathroom because I wasn't going to be home that night, and that's another story, but yeah, and it was good, um, yeah, and I'm going to make a, a video, a one month update, which is coming up soon because I'm a few days away from being one month on testosterone. So um, I'll make a one month update um, of all the changes, but just for reference too, um, I was put on um, one milligram. It's uh, actually one milliliter every two weeks. 
but yeah, so I'm on a, I'm a, on testosterone. That's what's happening, and I'm looking forward to seeing the changes and just feeling more comfortable in my own skin and feeling comfortable going into public. And yeah, so uh, that is all. Have a great day. Bye.